guys have questions about uh, Shirley. That would be great. So, do you want to start there? Yeah. Yes, please. Okay, go ahead. Well, Somebody needs to uh, ask sec a Secretary, from what I read, it sounds like there were a few hours where the COs kind of left the prisoners to riot among themselves. Is that accurate, and why? No, I, I wouldn't describe it that way. What happened was um, there was a, a fight, and so using the normal protocol, the COs went into the uh, unit. Um, they didn't want to engage in violence, the COs. Uh, they tried to negotiate to get the prisoners to go back into the cells. When it was apparent that the prisoners were not going to go back into the cells, the COs backed out of the unit to make sure that there was no violence and no one got hurt. At that point, once they backed out, the prisoners began to break apart tables to arm themselves, uh, went into areas where the COs normally were, uh, broke that apart, tried to remove the gas mass out of there, um, then took the computers and tried to, and broke those down and made knives and shivs, then took other particles and made knives, and they started to get ready for the COs to come back in. They armed themselves. There was about 47 of them. They started moving around. They broke everything inside. They then disarmed the camera so you couldn't see anymore. But you had 47 uh, inmates in there. Some of them had been convicted of armed assault with intent to murder before. Some of them had been convicted of murder. Some second degree murder. And they got ready for the COs. At that point, the COs used pepper spray to get in there. And the pepper spray was significant enough that the uh, inmates started to give themselves up groups of five at a time, groups of one at a time, until finally they all gave up, all 47 of them. So what the COs had done was by moving out and not confronting them until there was violence, they had disarmed them all and they had prevented anybody from getting hurt. And then the inmates were removed from the unit, put into an empty unit, and all got into cells. So no one got hurt, but if you see the videotape, you had 47 inmates ready to take on those COs, and they had armed themselves with knives, bats, and iron pipes, and they were going to go after the COs. What touched this off, and how did it spend so highly um, there were two, um There were two inmates that got in a fist fight, and they were from different units. And protocol at the Department of Corrections is that if two inmates at Sousa Baranowski, which is the maximum security prison, get into a fight, you're supposed to get all the inmates back into their cells. Excuse me. And that way, you make sure that it's not a gang-related fight because the, the units are broken up that way. And if, if, the, if it's a gang-related fight, what can happen is one unit can go after another unit. P1, which was this unit, refused to go back into their cells, and that's what happened. And we so is P1 afterwards, do you think that plan to in fact um, hurt the officers, I mean, which is a coordinated effort after this fight, you mentioned after this, this small fight between these two guys. Absolutely. The afterwards, a plan coordinated effort to in fact inflict harm on your seals. Absolutely was. They went, they broke the tables over. The, the video shows them ripping the tables up, taking the iron bars off, going into the guard area. You can see them ripping a computer apart, getting knives out of there, going around the entire uh, uh, unit, taking knives, making knives, going up on all the tiers, taking the fire extinguisher, making knives and bats out of that. They were getting ready for war. And what happened was the COs backed off. Uh, got the stop team ready, the state police came to assist, and they waited. They waited until they were ready. And then they used the pepper spray, and they wait, and they got the dogs, and they could hear the dogs barking, and then they gave in. And they gave in one at a time. How long did Last they back out to seal off that whole situation? How long did they back It was approximately uh, three hours. I got the call down at state police headquarters where I just happened to be on another issue, and it... Uh, by the time I was up there, it was like an hour and a half or two hours, and it was about an hour after that that they all had given in, and I left the uh, I left Susan. So I'd approximately three hours. Forty-seven people. Was Last question, question is Secretary Bennett. I do not comment uh, comment ever on who is in uh, what facility, and uh, there may have been some minor injuries. And P one is that all one one? Is it lockdown or what is the status? 
Um, as of last night, it was in lockdown. I'm not sure at this precise moment whether the whole facility is in lockdown. That particular uh, unit, they are removing all the people that were outside their cells from there. When the unit uh, was ordered, uh, when they were ordered back in their cells, the inmates who were already in their cells, um, they, they couldn't get out because only half the tier is out at one time. And P1, is that all one gang? Wrapped up and you happy with that? Well, for me, the most important thing, and I, I'm sure the secretary and the commissioner would agree with this too, is that nobody got hurt. Um, I mean, what you really want when you have a situation like this, particularly one that escalates quickly, uh, as this one did, is to pursue the protocol and the process that ensures that at the end um, nobody gets hurt. And as the secretary just said, there were some minor injuries, nothing serious. And uh, and I commend everybody for maintaining their clue, following their protocol, and doing the things they needed to do to make sure that nobody got hurt. We can always replace damaged furniture and stuff like that. It's much harder to deal with uh, situations and circumstances in which somebody gets hurt. Do you have confidence this won't happen again, and if not, what needs to change? Well, I think in some respects, um, it started as a fight, um, which was broken up, and then another fight started, which led to the deterioration of the situation. I think it's um, one of the things you have to manage in, uh, in any sort of uh, correctional facility is the, is the ongoing balance between um, freedom and security. And I think uh, folks here in Massachusetts do this as well as anybody. And I think based on the performance with respect to the way they handled this particular incident, it's a good example of the fact that people follow protocol and nobody got hurt. Have you seen the video? You, I've not seen the video, but I've talked to the secretary many times last night. Do you, I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, keep in mind, people should remember that uh, since January of 2015, when we took office, um, we're down almost 13% in the prison population. And that's made it possible for us um, to reposition many of our correctional officers. And we believe at this point that our staffing is appropriate. Governor, Last we, reviewed the dri we reviewed the driving records of school bus drivers in recent yep. elections and found that more than half had eight or more significant incidents on the record. What's your response to that? Well, one of the things we did based on previous news reports was close the communication loophole between local law enforcement and the registry. So at this point in time, if somebody is, uh, is charged, um, at the local level, we uh, have a policy in place for them to notify the registry immediately so that the registry is in a place to deal with that. But that's for arrests, I mean, speeding, crashes. Well, also, no, not the, that also, that's also for citations as well. Um, so we have the ability uh, to know and understand what the circumstances are. But, um, but I think in some respects, uh, this is a good example of where you, know, you sort of need constant ongoing dialogue between the locals and the Commonwealth to ensure that uh, the people driving the buses are, are in a position to do so and to do it safely. But it's Thanks. the state, it's the DPU that's reviewing these driving records every single year. And they, it, we've got drivers found responsible for, you know, 8 to 12 to 15 incidents, speeding, crashes, failure to stop. They had to stop for a school bus, not restraining a child. Well, I'm not going to speak to the specifics of any particular case because uh, I'm not familiar with the specifics of those cases. What I can tell you is that anybody who is charged uh, driving a school bus in the Commonwealth of Mass by local law enforcement will notify the Commonwealth and the registry and their license will be suspended. But a lot of times you're not charged for speeding or crashes and failure to stop. You're not charged, but you could be found responsible. Is that who you want driving our kids? Again, without knowing the specifics of any particular case, I'm not going to comment on that. The loophole that people are looking for us to close, we closed. Thanks, guys. Not, Thanks, they guys. Thanks. If they're not charged, Governor, it's not closed.